Hi everyone, so in this video I'm doing a random creature design challenge and um, I've seen a few people do this but the main person that inspired me to make this video was Dina Norland and I really hope I'm saying your name right but if you haven't heard of her channel please go look at her videos. Her art inspires me so much, she's so good at what she does and her videos are just so nice to watch, they're so relaxing. So please, please go check out her channel, I'll leave the link in the description. I got the idea to do this video from her and the way I'm gonna do it is I went to a random color generator and I generated three different colors which were, which were kind of like a magenta, a dark chocolatey brown, and then a, a kind of lighter grayish teal color. I use these as like a base for the color palette. I kind of change them a little bit, but I use this as my main color palette to work with for the creature. And then I went to a random animal generator and it gave me six different animals. So what I did is I took a dice or I took a die, and then I, I rolled it twice, and I took the two numbers, and those are the two animals that I combined together. And the two animals that I got were a tapir, or tapper, or... I have no idea how to say this animal's name. I've never heard of it before. But it, it has the body of a pig, and it sort of has like an elephant trunk on it, or kind of like an anteater sort of looking trunk thing. Um, I looked it up. It's a, it's a herbivore, a mammal, similar to, to in shape to a pig a short nose trunk, and it inhabits the jungle and forest areas of South America, Central America, and Southeastern Asia. I've never heard of this animal before in my life, so I got this animal as well as a snowy owl, which I thought were two very different things, but I thought it would make a nice fun combination. So I started off by doing studies of each animal, so I started with the first one, which tapir, tapper, topir, like I have no idea how, how to say this. Um, I found them a little bit hard to draw, but I think I got the hang of it after a few tries. They're kind of fun. I, I tried to, like, I basically took photos from Google and just tried to recreate them just to get a sense of their body structure. I didn't really go into too much depth with, like, skeletons and stuff because I didn't really need to know it inside and out <laughs> just for this purpose. I just need to know the basic, just, like, the basic way it looks. And then a snowy owl. I think people are pretty familiar with, with what snowy owls look like, but... I wanted to kind of like nail down the details a bit and the, the different specific things that make this particular owl look like a snowy owl. I did a lot of studying for these two animals because I found it so hard to draw the first one. Um, it was very difficult to draw. I don't know why. I, I, I find if an animal doesn't have fur on it, it's a bit more difficult to draw because you have to get all the skin wrinkles right. And you can't really hide parts that you're not sure about with the fur. You gotta actually know what the what the muscles and the skin looks like. That must be why I found it difficult. And just also they just have like a really weird head structure. But something I noticed about them is that they have sort of like um sort of like a hunch on their head almost. Like like their head goes up and then it goes into the body. It doesn't really go downwards. I don't know if that makes sense. Almost like almost like a hunchback kind of. And of course their their trunk makes them pretty unique. And they have toes with like um, big nails. They almost look like elephant feet, but different. I think I think it's a pretty common type of foot, but I wanted to keep that in mind for the final drawing. And the snowy owl, I just wanted to get the general shape of the body and where the wings go. And I needed to make sure I put the feet in the proper place because I always put the feet too, too far forward on the stomach for some reason. So I had to make sure that the feet went far enough back at the base of the tail. And after I... After I did studies of each animal, I kind of started to combine them together. And I started off by making it sort of the body of the of the first animal, of, of the pig one with the trunk. And I tried to kind of change features of it depending on what the snowy owl looked like. And then I thought that looked a little strange. I couldn't get it to look that good. So I kind of took the body shape of the snowy owl and I added, I, I made it have the ears of the other animal, the trunk of the other animal, because I, I think that's a pretty defining feature of that. I kept the wings, of course. I kind of left its stomach sort of like skin a little bit. So the whole thing wasn't the same kind of feather. I kind of left sort of the color of the first animal and then I made the rest of it almost like there's two different colors of feathers. It was supposed to be kind of like, like you could sort of see the skin and I was kind of trying to go for that because the first animal, it's mostly just skin. So I wanted the belly of the creature to, to not have feathers on it. But I think I ended up adding a really subtle feather texture in the end. So I took, I took the shape of the snowy owl and then the way that the first animal looked. I kind of, I made the feet look like it. I added a little hunch on the neck. I made the face a little bit longer to compensate for, for it having a longer face than the owl. I kept the legs the same structure, but I made them look like, look like the other animal's feet. 
and I made the tail a lot shorter because um, the tapir, or whoever you say it, has a really short tail. And I definitely want to keep the feathers, I thought it made it look nice and cute. And then um, I had to keep in mind the colors that I chose in the beginning, and I kind of did little like test ones. Well, after I, I had the final sketch of the animal that I wanted to go with, uh, I kind of like labeled the parts that I took from each animal so I could keep track of how I decided to sort of combine them together. So I'll read it off, I guess. The tapper's hunch, the tapir just hunts better. So the hunch of it, the short tail, the way the feet look, the ears, and the skin. And the owl, I uh, made the head rounder. I kind of combined the head shapes together. Um, I made the owl have the body, sort of like the general body shape of the owl. The owl feathers, the wings, everything like that the texture of the feathers, and I left the stomach kind of looking like skin to go with the other animal, and I left the feet kind of with exposed skin. When it came time to actually draw it, um, I enjoyed this so much more than I thought I would. I guess I haven't done watercolor in a really long time, so it was a lot of fun drawing this creature. Um, I really wanted to do this challenge because I'm not very creative when it comes to creature design, and I just don't focus on it that much. So I thought taking two animals and combining them together would be a really good way to kind of um, think about the different design elements. And like I said, um, Dina Norland, I hope I'm saying your name right, is um, the main inspiration for this, but I've seen Lavender Town do this, and I think maybe draw with Java Digit at some point, or some kind of character design challenge. I've also seen Sophia Lu do a random character challenge, but uh, for humans mostly... But I, th I just think it's a good way to kind of um, test your creativity and to, to challenge yourself. So I definitely had so much fun. I definitely want to do this again in the future. Um, I also want to do it with other things besides living things. I want to do it with buildings and settings and stuff like that. I thought that would be pretty fun and pretty neat to try because, of course, settings are a weakness of mine, like many artists. And I took the general colors that I was given, but I kind of gave them a more, a more muted look because I didn't want this to be too neon. The colors are more of just like a guideline, just to like give me an idea of what it should look like. I tried to stick with them. The magenta was really bright, but everything ended up dulling down because I mixed them all together. And I'm actually happy with how this turned out. I think it's really strange. It's like a bird, but it's not a bird, and it has actual ears, but it can fly, but it has a really short tail, so how well can it really fly? I don't know. It was just fun drawing it in different poses showing the different angles of it. I did have a lot of fun with this challenge. I love using brush pen to like, to outline things. It's one of my favorite tools. I think it's the Sakura, Sakura Pigma brush pen or just Sakura brush pen, but I use the fine point one because it's really easy to control and I've had it for a really long time and the ink is running out, but if I go slow enough, it doesn't, it, um, it still works. So that's good. And I would definitely recommend to try this if you haven't. It's a lot of fun kind of coming up with your own creature. And especially if you get something with feathers, it's a lot of fun, or something with fur. But if it's something that has skin, that would definitely be a challenge, and I hope I get something like that in the future. I just realized I haven't thought of a name for this. If you have a name suggestion, let me know. Just like, um, I guess a combination of the two, of the two different animals, maybe a... No, because snowy owl is two different words. So you could just say, like, you could just literally interchange the words. But if you think of a interesting name for this animal or maybe what it maybe a little story for it how it spends its time i definitely it can't really peck anything because it doesn't have a beak so it has a trunk i wonder what it would use that for and it can fly and i wonder how well it can actually hold onto tree branches because its feet aren't really bird feet they're kind of shaped like bird feet but they don't have talons so or like a claws i don't really i don't know how this animal would actually function in the wild but let me know if you have any ideas so i hope you found this interesting I definitely had a lot of fun making this video. It's probably the most fun I've had making a video in a long time, which makes me think that doing random designs for stuff could be a possibility for the future of my channel because this was honestly a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.